Welcome to the Medic's Guide to Local Anesthetic Blocks. For today's session, we will be discussing Beer's Block. A Beer's Block is an intravenous form of regional anesthesia that is used for short surgical procedures. In the block, you exsanguinate the limb requiring surgery, isolate it from the rest of the circulation by means of a tourniquet, and then intravenously inject the anesthetic agent to produce the required effects. Although the exact mechanism of action is unknown, it is thought that the following results in the anesthesia and analgesia that the block produces. Firstly, injection of the anesthetic agent produces analgesia by acting on the major nerve trunks, small nerves and nerve endings. The effect is enhanced by asphyxia, which occurs at 20 to 30 minutes, and the molecules of the anesthetic agent are able to pass through the walls of the veins and into the surrounding tissue. Finally, resultant hypothermia and acidosis will further enhance the anesthetic activity. The block is indicated in surgical procedures below the elbow, below the knee, and procedures lasting 40 to 60 minutes. The advantages of this form of anesthesia include that it is easy to perform, that there is a low rate of block failure, that the technique is safe when properly executed, that the onset of and recovery from the anesthesia are fast, and that it provides muscle relaxation for the surgeon. The disadvantages include that it should only be used for short procedures, that the patient could experience pain from the tourniquet after 20 to 30 minutes, and that early release of the anesthetic into the circulation could result in sudden cardiovascular collapse and or seizures. The block is contraindicated in Raynaud's disease, homozygous sickle cell disease, crush injuries in children younger than five years old, tourniquets that are unreliable or ineffective, and procedures lasting less than 20 to 25 minutes as a toxic reaction may occur if you deflate the tourniquet prior to this length of time. Before you begin, it is important to ensure that the procedure has been fully explained to the patient so that informed consent can be obtained. The equipment required for the block is as follows. A fully functioning double tourniquet that needs to be inflated to 100 millimeters of mercury above the systolic blood pressure of the patient and that it has been tested prior to the procedure. In order for each cuff of the tourniquet to be inflated, you need high pressure compressed air with its wall attachment firmly secured. You need an exsanguination band. You need an intravenous catheter inserted on the dorsal aspect of the hand on the side requiring the beer's block, as well as a large bore intravenous catheter on the contralateral arm for administration of sedatives, analgesia, and emergency medication should they be required. Lastly, you will also need functioning resuscitation equipment. The anesthetic agent of choice is lignocaine. For a 70 kilogram patient in a 20 milliliter syringe, mix 5 milliliters of 2% lignocaine with 15 milliliters of sterile water to dilute the 20 milliliter solution to 0.5%. You will require a total of 40 milliliters, which is equivalent to 200 milligrams of lignocaine. Do not increase the dose for larger patients. The toxic dose of lignocaine is 3 mg per kilogram and it is important that you do not exceed this dose as exceeding the dose will lead to symptoms of cardiovascular and central nervous system toxicity which include circumoral paresthesia, tinnitus, nausea and vomiting, hypertension, tachycardia and seizures. Loss of consciousness, hypotension and bradycardia are pre-terminal signs. Resuscitation is required should there be any evidence of toxicity. It is important to note that intravenous bupivacaine is contraindicated and adrenaline should not be used in combination with the lignocaine. First, apply a bandage to where you are going to site the tourniquet in order to protect the skin. Ensure that you have the correct size tourniquet. Secure the tourniquet around the arm with a red band distal and blue band proximal.
ensure that all connections between the tourniquet band and the machine are secure. Exsanguinate the arm with the exsanguination band distally to proximally up to the level of the red tourniquet band. Inflate the red cuff and then inflate the blue cuff which exsanguinates the arm to below the shoulder. Once the blue cuff is inflated, the red cuff can be deflated and the exsanguination band removed. After 20 to 30 minutes of surgery, the patient may experience tourniquet pain. When this happens, reinflate the red cuff and deflate the blue cuff for the remainder of the procedure to relieve the pain. Here, the exsanguination band is being applied. Each cuff should be inflated to 100 millimeters of mercury above the systolic blood pressure of the patient. Constrict proximal to the injection site and inject all 40 milliliters of lignocaine. There should be no resistance or swelling. When you have 5 milliliters left to inject, release the constriction pressure and allow the last of the lignocaine to infiltrate the rest of the arm. Finally, take out the catheter sighted in the hand to be operated on. You are now ready to operate.